Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Baron and this is your Brain on Books and today we're going to do something slightly different. I originally sat down to do a favorite books of all time list and when I started putting it together it became apparent quite quickly that most of them were books I've only read within the past handful of years, maybe one or two times, and I was completely taken over by recency bias. All the books from when I was younger or from my youth that I read maybe four or five times had huge profound impacts on me. I just omitted completely. So I wanted to share with you what those books are, and I might still do a favorite book of all time list video, kind of with those more recent inclusions. But aside from sharing these, I wanted to know what are your favorite books from your youth? Do you still consider them favorites? You know, does it have to be complex adult fiction? This is something that I just generally find really interesting and I'd love to get your guys' take on it. So leave your comments down below. But without further ado, let's just get into it with the first book being The Giver by Lois Lowry. Now this book was so impactful to me as a young person. I can't remember exactly what age I picked it up but I just vividly remember that experience, like a veil was just lifted up and it just changed my entire perception about how I saw other people and the world. I very much had rose-colored glasses on. I kind of assumed and was naive in the sense that like adults and institutions were righteous. Just completely ridiculous to think about it now as an adult, but at that age, that's that's how I saw the world. And The Giver changed that for me. And it was also, it was dark and atmospheric and had grotesque imagery, stuff that was just unique that I hadn't experienced, you know, reading more typical middle grade fiction like Ronald Dahl or Jack London and stuff like that. This was new and I was obsessed. I was hooked. I read the entire quartet and I liked the other books in the series, but none of it really affected me the way The Giver did. And I started playing guitar and other instruments around that time and i vividly remember sitting down and writing songs about this book that's how obsessed i was with it i just wanted to read it over and over again i wanted to talk about it over and over again it was the first big impactful book of my life moving on from there i have go ask alice now i just mentioned a second ago I started playing guitar when I was young and anyone else that picks up an instrument kind of goes through the period of learning classic rock and Jimi Hendrix and Woodstock and all that kind of stuff and I was no exception to that rule. And I had a very romanticized image about kind of that 60s counterculture and drug use and psychedelia and stuff. I was just like so naive and I thought it was cool and hip and edgy and all that stuff. Well, I picked up Go Ask Alice based on that and boy, this was a gut punch. This is a devastating story about a girl's experience with drug use in that time period. And it just opened my eyes up. This was the first time I really saw somebody else's tragic life unfold. Um, I mean, I wasn't overly sheltered as a child, but this was different. This was an exposure to something that I had never seen or wanted to see, but here it was in my face and it affected me. And this book, I've read it a couple times. I don't know if I want to read it again because it's, it's, hard, it's a hard read to get through. Um, but if you haven't, I still recommend it because it's, it's a worthwhile experience, at least once. So moving on from there. Now I didn't put these books in any particular order, but if I had to choose one book from my youth that is like the end all be all, it would be Perks of Being a Wallflower. Now, when I was a freshman in high school, we were reading Catcher in the Rye in school and I liked it. I loved Catcher in the Rye. Not enough for me to put it on this list, but it was a good book. And my teacher recommended Perks of Being a Wallflower to me saying, hey, if you like Catcher, you'll probably like this. It's a little more of a modern take. And it absolutely was, but this book was the first time that I had a deep emotional reaction to a piece of fiction. This book broke me and I was just floored. I recommended this to everybody I knew, got my friends to read it. I just connected to it on so many different levels. Well, one, just based on my age and that whole like teen angst feeling, but also like when I was in high school, I went to kind of an arts academy and everybody there was kind of the eclectic types and people on the fringe. And I could see not only myself in these characters, but all the people around me and all my friends. And it just made it so visceral and so real. 
And when the film came out for this, I was beyond excited. I mean, it was a little lackluster of an adaptation, but that's kind of how these things go. But I was still happy we got one. If you have not read this book, please give it a try. Now, I understand it is middle grade fiction, but it's very, very well done. Um, so yeah, I just, I absolutely adore this book. So moving on from there, I would be remiss if I did not mention the works of Charles Bukowski. I was obsessed with Bukowski in high school. Pretty much always had one of his books in my backpack at all times. I've read them all. I don't even know how many times. If I had to pick one book, it would probably be Ham on Rye, which is this more autobiographical novel. But yeah, something about his writing was just, oh, I was obsessed. I just, I couldn't get enough of it because it really spoke to that being your own man and that transitional period of like being a teenager to being an adult. There was just, I, it spoke to me. Um, I really liked his kind of punk rock attitude while still being artistic and flowery and, and uh, showing restraint in areas of beauty while being absolutely disgusting in other areas. It just, that juxtaposition just floored me and I just could not get enough. As an adult, it's something I don't particularly care for. Now when I read his stuff, I'm kind of like, this guy's gross, I don't know why I like this. But if we're talking about books from my youth, I have to mention him because he was a big part of my teen years. Last book on the list, and probably a book that would be on most people's list, is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. <sighs> what is there to be said about The Hobbit that hasn't already been said? Well, kind of controversial, but I actually prefer The Hobbit to The Lord of the Rings. And I know Lord of the Rings is the big, epic, large scope story that everybody loves, but there's just a charming element to The Hobbit that I just cannot get enough of. I absolutely love it. I read it when I was a kid, read Lord of the Rings when I was a kid. I don't know how many times I've read The Hobbit. I mean, it's probably in the double digits at this point. Um, but I also took a really big break from reading fiction. I've always been a reader, but I'd say most, all the way through my 20s, I read nothing but nonfiction. And most, a good portion of my teen years too, I read mostly nonfiction. Um, and probably five, six years ago, I was over at my parents' house for a dinner party. And my dad had the original copy of The Hobbit that I read from when I was a kid sitting on a shelf. And I don't know what it was that sparked this, but I just kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye and just gravitated to it, took it home that night, read the whole book, and it completely re-sparked my love of fiction. And it's the reason I'm sitting in front of you right now is because of that book. So, I mean, I assume everybody's read The Hobbit, so there's only so much I can say about the book, but I just love it so much. And that's my list. So like I said before, I really, really wanna know what yours are. I wanna know, do you still consider them favorites? Like I said, this is a topic that really interests me. So leave your comments down below and let's kind of get some discourse going on that. And until next time, see ya.